And we are now moving into Module 2. Module 2 is about solving rational equations. We just reviewed how to solve in Module 1 linear equations. So now I'm introducing you in a new vocabulary word, rational. So let's go to our class notes and find out what that means. Okay, guys and gals. A rational equation is an equation in which each term contains a rational expression. And the word rational means the same thing it's meant in 097, 098, 099. It means fraction. Think about it this way. The word rational has the word ratio in it. And a ratio is comparing two things, which means you have a fraction. For example, the ratio of boys to girls is two-thirds, two to three. So anytime you hear the word rational, from now on, you're going to think of what? A fraction. So anytime an equation has fractions in it, we call it a rational equation. Well, we already discussed this in Module 1. We don't like fractions, so we learn we can get rid of them. So what we're going to do right now is review what we previously learned. When you're dealing with a rational equation, how do you get rid of the fractions? So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, so here's my rational equation. And we talked about this. If we want to get rid of fractions, we want to wipe out these division bars. And to wipe out division, we have to do multiplication. But we have to balance. We have to multiply every term by the same number to keep balance. So that's why we need the concept of LCD. LCD stands for least common denominator. We need a common denominator for 2, 4, and 3. What number can 2, 4, and 3 divide into? What is it? Very good. It's 12. If you said the 2 times tables, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. If you said the 4 times tables, 4, 8, 12. If you said the 3 times tables, 3, 6, 9, 12. That's the smallest number they all have in common. So that's what we're going to use. And if you remember from Module 1C, we don't want to make these 12s. We don't want to keep them as fractions. We want to get rid of them. So we're going to do a balancing act. The opposite of division is multiplication. And if we multiply everybody by 12, we keep balance. And this is going to help us get rid of the fractions. If you remember, this was a fraction because 1 cannot divide by 2 and make a whole number. But by putting 12 in the numerator, 12 divides by 2. That gives us 6. So we have 6 now times 1x. No more fractions. 4 divides into 12 three times. So don't forget your minus. Then you have 3 times 11. Bring down your equals. 3 divides into 12 four times. So you have 4 times 2x. So if you look now, there's no more fractions. This is going to be a nice, simple, linear equation. We're going to multiply, and there it is. So here's the moral of the story. You can take an equation with fractions that we now give it a name. It's called rational. Everybody say it. Rational. And when you wipe the fractions out, it becomes linear. We're walking backwards. We took something that was difficult and made it back to Algebra 1. Now, we're going to move our variables to the left. I'm a creature of habit. What do you put on the right side if these terms cancel out? Zero. We move our numbers to the right because I'm a creature of habit. Zero plus 33 is 33. What are we going to divide by? Very good. It's dividing by a negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. We don't need to write the 1. We just write positive x. Now, this is important. 33 doesn't divide by 2 evenly, but you can't leave the answer like this. We talked about this. When an answer is a fraction, the denominator must be a positive number. Think about it in real life. Can you take 33 items and divide them into negative 2 groups? Or could you take $33 and divide them into ne by negative two people? You can't. So one of the rules you're going to learn is that when you're giving your answer as a fraction, the negative symbol never stays in the denominator. It always floats to the top. So you can't write the answer like this. We would accept negative 33 over 2 with the negative in the numerator. 
or would accept it with a negative in the middle of the fraction bar, written like that. Now, my personal preference is I don't like that because then you guys never remember where does the negative symbol belong. I prefer it in the numerator where it belongs. Now, if you divide 33 by 2, it doesn't go in evenly to make a whole number, but it does make a decimal that terminates, stops. It's negative 16 and 5 tenths. So, any way to write those answers is acceptable. Okay, great. Let's look at our notes. I think we have one more. So sure we do. We have one more example in our notes. Let's look at that. So again, all we're learning really here is that we have a new vocabulary word. If an equation contains fractions, it is called what? Rational. Very good. So here's our second example in this module. All right. If you look, our goal is to get who by itself? X. Can we get X by itself? Not right now, it's stuck in fractions. So to get rid of fractions, what do we need? An LCD. We have in the denominator a 5, a 4, and a 2. What would be the LCD? What do they have in common? Think of your times tables. Think of what number these all divide into. Very good, it's 20. 5, 10, 15, 20. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. That's what we're going to use. What are we going to do with the 20? We're going to put it in the numerator. We're going to connect it by parentheses, which is what operation? Multiplication. If we're trying to get rid of fractions, which are division, we must do the opposite, which is multiplication. You could do the work and do 20 times this first, but why do that? Multiplication and division, mom and dad are equal. It doesn't matter what order. So we're going to do always the division first. 5 goes into 20 four times. That leaves us four parentheses x minus 1. No more fraction. Bring down your plus. 4 goes into 20 five times. That's five parentheses x. Bring down your equals. 2 goes into 20 ten times. That's 10x plus 3. And then over here there is no division bar, so there's no division. We'll just bring that down. What I want you to appreciate is if you look, there are no more fractions. So this is no longer a rational equation. You have now made it Algebra 1. It is linear. And you're going to see through the whole course, that's all we're going to do, is we're going to learn tricks to make difficult equations back to Algebra 1. What's the first step we learned in solving linear equations? That's right, we get rid of parentheses, we distribute. So we get 4x minus 4 plus 5x equals 10x plus 30 and then we multiply that we get 20. All right we're gonna CLT. What does that stand for? Collect like terms. 4x plus 5x is 9x and we're gonna leave the minus 4. On the right side we're gonna bring down our 10x and 30 plus 20 is 50. Great. I'm a creature of habit. I always move my variables to the left. 9x minus 10x is negative 1x. Now you can just write negative x, you, but if you like to put the 1, you could leave the 1. Minus 4 equals 50. Numbers move to the right. We add 4, we add 4. Negative 1x equals 54. This is where a problem comes in. Guys and gals, you have to remember, your job is to solve for x, and x must be positive. So to get that negative 1 out of there, if this is connected by multiplication, we're still going to go back and do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. And in my class, I expect them to show me that. A negative divided by a negative is a positive x. The 54 divided by negative 1 is negative 54. So the only thing that happened today in Module 2A is we learned an equation that contains fractions has a special name. It is called rational. To solve it, we did exactly what we did the previous module. We got rid of the fractions. We used that concept to LCD. All right, the next module coming up, we got something a little bit more trickier. I'll see you then.